Tech family, welcome to my ultimate laptop buying guide. Whether you are shopping for Black Friday, Christmas, school, or any other reason, I wanted to create an up-to-date video to help you find the perfect laptop. I've reviewed a ton of laptops over the last year, and with the help of my team of tech advisors on the Discord server, we've researched even more. Plus, since I'm just one guy, just Josh, maybe a couple of familiar faces will drop in to talk about some important laptops that I haven't reviewed. If you're new to the channel, I'm Josh, and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watch, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell, I would certainly appreciate it. Also, I recently moved into a new studio and I'm still sorting out the sound so there is a bit of echo coming from the mic. I did actually try to film off a second mic today, but unfortunately on the move, I left the uh, cable at home, so we're just stuck with the lav one. So anyway, bear with me, a ton of acoustic dampening is coming in. I already have some up, but I should sort this out soon. This is gonna be my biggest guide I have ever done. I'm gonna separate it into three parts. In part one, which you're watching now, I'll first cover important tips for buying a laptop, then I'll cover my budget recommendations for laptops under 800 US dollars. In part two of the video, I'll cover the more popular $800 to $1,200 price range. And then in the final part, I'll cover the premium $1,200 to $2,000 range, as well as the professional $2,000 and above range. As I walk through each price bracket, I'll tell you exactly what you should look for and if necessary, what you should compromise on. In this analysis, I'll cover every major type of laptop user, including those just browsing the web and using Office, students, programmers, photo and video editors, and of course, gamers. Look, this is going to be a monstrous video, as you can probably tell already. So I hope you've had a bathroom break and have some snacks handy. All laptops I recommend in this video will have links in the description below. Now, keep in mind, prices fluctuate, especially during sale times like Black Friday, Christmas, etc. My team and I will be keeping you up to date with the latest deals in the deals channel on the Discord server. Link to that in the description below. Regardless, do your research upfront. You don't want to have to spend time researching laptops the moment you see them on sale. The best ones sell out fast. Also, I'd suggest you look a little above your price range as you might be pleasantly surprised by the discounts. Heck, retailers like Best Buy are well known to rotate sales of most of their popular lines. And I'll call out in this guide when I think you should consider buying a more premium older model from a prior year, as these are likely to be far more heavily discounted. A couple more tips. Pay attention to return policies. If they are generous, I would suggest you don't overthink buying a laptop that's on sale and just jump in. Several popular laptops in this year have been selling out fast. I'm looking at you, IdeaPad 515 with AMD. And you'll be kicking yourself if you miss out. In fact, in times like these, where going to physical stores to try laptops is very challenging, if you are deciding between two and your credit card can handle it, you may want to consider buying both and returning the one you don't want. It is unlikely that you'll get a better deal at another time of the year. And when it comes to longevity, a ton of people ask me, Josh, suggest a laptop that will last many years. I guarantee you, no such make and model exists. It really is the luck of the draw. There are some brands that tend to have higher standards like Apple, where the laptops may on average last longer, but even they've had a bad run with their butterfly keyboards that frequently failed. Look, I've had cheap Asus laptops that lasted years, and I've had expensive Microsoft Surface laptops that barely lasted more than one. There are so many variables here. My advice is if longevity is super important to you, buy a laptop with a long extended warranty. Many manufacturers offer this. Lastly and importantly, many stores and manufacturers you buy from will refund you the difference if the price drops on your laptop after you buy it, often across the entire return period, which could be greater than 30 days during holiday times. And they do tend to honor savings from coupons that you might find after you purchased it. So. Keep checking the price for some time after you buy and call them to price match. Note, Amazon doesn't do this, so factor that into your decision as to where you choose to buy from. Let's start with budget shoppers. With the launch of AMD's Ryzen 4000 series processors, laptops in this price range now deliver insane performance, unprecedented in prior years. Plus, many manufacturers really rose to the occasion in 2020, matching the increase in power with an increase in the overall quality of the laptop. For example, we finally saw budget laptops with decent screens, ones that weren't so dim and washed out that they were hard to see. 
If you are shopping for a budget laptop, I would strongly suggest you don't look at models from prior years. The gap to the current Ryzen Gen processors is too great. They run faster, particularly in multi-core, and tune less power to do so. So therefore, it, it makes your battery life go further. I made a video on this topic, which I'll link below. Now, if you're shopping in the sub $800 US dollar price range, you are going to want a minimum of 8 gig of RAM in dual channel, a 4 core 8 thread processor, or a 6 core 6 thread processor. This will maximize the likelihood of getting longevity out of the laptop. You want to ensure it's powerful enough for many years to come. I also want to ensure it's comfortable to use. I call this getting the basics right. This means it's got to have a comfortable keyboard, accurate trackpad, doesn't get too hot to the touch or too loud from fan noise, plus a screen that is bright enough to be viewable in a variety of lighting conditions. This means a minimum of 300 nits of brightness, especially if the screen is a touchscreen. Those tend to be glossy and will reflect light from other sources, making it harder for you to see. With all that said, in this price range, you will have to make some sacrifices. For casual users, I'd go for a better screen and be okay with accepting a less powerful Intel processor. For software developers, I'd go for a more powerful laptop with an AMD processor, sacrificing a bit on the screen. For video editors, you kind of need both a powerful laptop and a good screen. So I'd sacrifice in other areas. Here are my picks. For casual users and students, I'd try to get an IdeaPad Slim 714. The Slim 7 is a step up in Lenovo's range from the IdeaPad 5s, and there is an Intel variant going around with the NVIDIA MX350 graphics for under $800. US The pro here is you'll get a color accurate display. The con is the CPU will underperform the AMD ones, particularly in multi-core. I would have preferred you got the AMD, but it's always sold out. However, Honestly, for casual users, the Intel CPU will be fine and the dedicated NVIDIA MX350 graphics in the model I'm recommending is good enough for some light gaming. If you do have your heart set on a more powerful AMD CPU, Lenovo just launched the Yoga 6, which I haven't got in for testing yet, nor seen any major reviews on, so I can't give it a formal recommendation. But it does seem like a good deal, as you get the more powerful 6-core 12-thread AMD processor, even though Best Buy incorrectly specified it as the 6-core six 6-thread six one. Lenovo informs me that the screen should be brighter than my minimum 300 nit requirement. The real negatives here, from my perspective, is the 13.3-inch screen. If this is your only device, I'd really prefer you got one with a larger 14-inch screen. I don't believe you'll be as productive on a smaller screen. And it is a bit heavy for a laptop with a 13.3-inch screen. Anyway, the Yoga 6 does look like an interesting laptop that I'd like to do a review on. Lastly, for casual users, if you are certain you are only doing very light tasks like browsing the web and office and you want something that is insanely portable, take a look at Dell's new Inspiron 7000 line with Intel's 11th gen Tiger Leg. I have one right here. It's a decent option. It's got a bright, color accurate 14.5 inch display and it's still a very small lightweight laptop. It's also got that desirable 16 by 10 aspect ratio that is better optimized for applications that go down the screen like Microsoft Word or browsing the web. The main reasons I rank it behind my other recommendations is because in my review, link below, I found its performance to be subpar. Also, its chassis isn't as strong, its keyboard feels mushy, and the keys are hard to make out when you've got the backlight on. For software developers, as mentioned, I want to ensure you get a decent powerful CPU and I'd like to see you with enough screen real estate to comfortably code. Ideally, a 14 inch or larger screen. My favorite laptop right now in this price range is the Lenovo IdeaPad 515. I feel it completely stole the show this year in the budget category. For its ludicrous $600 US dollar price point, you get a very lightweight 15-inch laptop. Don't let the 15-inch form factor scare you. As I mentioned, it's very lightweight and portable. It has an extremely comfortable keyboard, accurate trackpad, and front-firing speakers that won't get muffled if you use the laptop on your lap. It also has a bright enough display that isn't reflective and it doesn't get hot to the touch when under load. There are only two negatives with this laptop. It isn't completely silent under load and the screen isn't color accurate. So you can't use this laptop for photo or video editing. My recommendation is to get this laptop with an AMD 4000 processor. Now, it is frequently sold out. So if you can't get it, try to find the 14 inch version with AMD. If you still can't get that, then go for the Slim 7 I mentioned above, or the Intel version of the IdeaPad 515. Sure, it's not as good as the AMD version, but the 15-inch chassis should have enough cooling to allow that Intel chip to perform well.
There are many other competitors in this price range that got a lot of media coverage this year that I don't like for a specific reason. The Asus Swift 3 and the IdeaPad Flex 5, for example, both have worse displays than the laptops I mentioned, which I believe are below the line of an acceptable screen. All right, video and photo editors. If you are shopping in the budget range, the only laptop I feel that ticks the right boxes here is the Asus ZenBook 14. It has a bright, color accurate 14 inch screen, comes with a powerful combination of an AMD CPU and Nvidia's MX350 dedicated graphics. There are two reasons why I prefer you get dedicated graphics from Nvidia. First, in real world, more programs are optimized for Nvidia's graphics than either the integrated graphics from AMD or Intel. Popular video creation software Premiere Pro is an example of this. In my tests, it performs far better on the Asus with its dedicated NVIDIA graphics than on laptops with integrated ones. The second reason is that dedicated graphics come with graphics RAM. This means that under graphical intensive tasks, the integrated graphics won't eat into your 8GB of system RAM. So, your RAM will go further. Now, as mentioned, buying a laptop in this price range has compromises and the Asus certainly has some big ones. When the keyboard backlight is on, especially in a dark room, there isn't any contrast with the color of the characters, so it's really hard to make out the keys. And two, it doesn't support USB-C charging, so you'll have to take your barrel pin charger with you. Overall, budget shoppers, I would caution you to jump on other deals in this price range without solid research. For example, one of the models of the HP Envy with AMD that Best Buy sells has a really bad screen. I do like the HP Envy a lot, but not at this price range and definitely not with that configuration. When it comes to gamers, I don't review a lot of laptops in this price range. I mean, most of the laptops I have recommended with AMD's Ryzen 4000 series processors or Intel's i7, 10th gen or 11th gen processors are able to comfortably pay eSports titles. However, for a really good gaming experience in this price range, I think I'm going to have to phone a friend. Thank you, Josh. For $800, I have two suggestions. One, the MSI GF65. This features the 9300H 4-core 8-thread chip, a 1660 Ti, half a terabyte storage, a single 8GB memory DIMM, and for $750, I highly recommend the extra $40 to increase that to 16GB for dual-channel memory performance. Absolutely worthwhile. You'll get the most out of that GPU. And with that 1660 Ti, all in all, this 4.1-pound chassis, this offers a pretty nice value, and it has 120Hz display. Not the best color gamut solution, but we're trying to minimize sacrifice at this price point, and I find this to be a nice solution in the gaming laptop segment. However, the Tough 506, I actually reviewed this particular laptop, but not quite as powerful as this one. In November 22nd, apparently Best Buy is going to be selling this $1,000 SKU for $799. It's got a 90 watt RTX 2060, the 4800H, right? Everybody and their brother loves that chip. Eight gigabytes of memory. That's probably in dual channel though. All in all, not bad, but it has a 60 Hertz panel, but you can't argue the hardware that you're getting for 799. Might be the best bang for the buck for the year 2020 when it comes to the spec of the machine. Let me know what you think of that. All right, that concludes part one of this video. As I said, stay tuned for the second part of the video where I'll cover laptops in the $800 to $1,200 price range and part three where I'll cover laptops in the $1,200 to $2,000 price range and then $2,000 and above. Anyway, if you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. And until the next video, I will catch you later.